Today on the Dr. Oz Show. Oz Uncensored. Your most outrageous, humiliating confessions. Camel toe. Should I be concerned? You have two. She has nine? One of them actually lactate. Everybody's got a secret, even Dr. Oz. How do you bring it up? It's a wind instrument, right? I mean, you go, ah. take a little whiff. What do you smell? Whoa. How do you plead? Guilty, oh, for sure. Oh, come on, it's the best. Next. We have done more than 500 shows, helped you lose more than 3 million pounds, held some of the largest free health clinics in history. But which shows have always been your hands-down favorites? Embarrassing questions. That's why today I'm devoting one entire hour to your most excruciating, awkward health problems of all time. And I'm getting started with the most outrageous questions of all. Too extreme to air until now. Fasten your seatbelts. For the first time ever, it's Oz Uncensored. Here they are. I saved them all. I saved every question since we started the show. In these bins are the ones that are too awkward, too cringeworthy, too flat out outrageous to make it on TV. But I'm breaking them out today because we are going uncensored. I have bumps on my When I pass gas, it's really is there anything my husband can do to make his <laughs> Dr. Oz, I just gotta ask you this question. She will be itching up there. I have a very uh, intimate I have hemorrhoids. There's like this much space between my vagina and my Problem, I ain't a leakage. Ain't a leakage? Yes. Awkward. So I picked a few of my favorite embarrassing questions that actually made it past our sensors. And first up, is Renatha. Come on down, Renatha. <laughs> you have a big cheering section, Hello. Renatha. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? So good. nice to meet you. It's an honor to meet you. So share your question with everybody. Okay, well, so you know how you really have to go to the bathroom, okay? You really, like, have to go number two, okay? Uh -huh. And, I mean, you're sitting there for hours and you have to go, but when you finally go, it goes somewhere. It's, you don't have to go anymore. Where did it go, Dr. Ron? This is called a ghost poop. Uh, real? Ghost poop? It's called a ghost poop. Okay. Ha have you gone today? Uh, have I gone today? Yes. Not yet, but I did have to. You did have to. <laughs> yeah. So we're experiencing this right now. So when it finally meanders out, when you have an opening in your schedule to let it out, uh, <laughs> Is, is it hard? Uh, it is hard, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Dots. 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 <laughs> pellets. Bird pellets falling out. Pellets, yes. Okay. Dots, drops, dots. Okay. <laughs> you can hear them hit the water. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. All right. So let me explain what that plop plop's all about. Okay. This, this, you know, this ghost poop issue is a big one. Let's okay. talk to what normally happens. Okay. okay so, Renata, here's your colon. Okay. Pretty pink, mm -hmm. and it comes down into the rectum. That's what's supposed to happen. So let's say you've got something coming down, and it is coming down the pike, meandering down, meandering down, meandering down, right? Really? Yeah. Really? Well, it's not this color, that... but it's, it's about okay. this size, though. Okay? <laughs> it comes down, and you can't go to the bathroom because you're in a meeting. Okay. So it waits here. But here's the deal. When it hits this trap door, which is what happens because you're holding it in like that, the brain is still signaling the urge to let it go. If you don't act on that urge, this poop remains in the intestinal system, and the colon, this part of the colon, is really good at sucking the fluid out of the poop. Okay. Which means the poop... Doctor, you got me. I'm sorry, but, <laughs> but you'll, you'll have a chance to get me back. All right? So, all of this... Now, now, all that poop is dried out, some of it on your dress. Yeah. Right? But, I'm sorry, you'll get my pill. It's okay. Get the, so now we've got this little poop pellet, huh? right, that you're talking about. Right, it's so absorbed, the drops, okay. It's dry, okay. it's small, it's stuck here on the trap door. It can't go anywhere, right, until you have a desire to go. And then guess what happens? You have more food in your intestine. Mm. It begins to meander along, right? <laughs> It begins to be It's dropping off fluid every once in a while uh -huh, like that. Uh -huh. But it gets to the end and hits the trap door again and show me what happens. I'll do it. I'll show you what happens, yeah. Dr. Ross. You ready? Yes, please show ready? me. Yes. Oh, I'm, oh. So, I'm so sorry. Yes. 
I can, I can tell, I can tell how, I'm so sorry. how tragically <laughs> saddened you are by this. So, you got another pellet ball here, right? Another pellet ball. And you got another one of that. Now, you got two of these things here. And the problem is, these get really hard. Mm -hmm. And they're like little broccolets in there with sharp edges and all. And finally, finally, you get to go to the bathroom, the trap door disappears. And as you try to let these babies out through the rectum, they're not happy about the fact they've gotten hard. As they go down here, they begin to scrape off these sides. And as they do that, they finally plop, plop. And what have you done? Scrape the inside. You've traumatized this. Okay. You've caused irritation and you've caused fissures. Okay. Oh, that's not good. Okay, so go to the bathroom? Okay. Yeah, I think you ought to go to the bathroom. Okay. But, but listen, I know, although you know you're supposed to listen to your body, and we're all supposed to listen to our bodies. Sometimes you just can't get there because we're not going to be right. in the right spot at the right time. So if you absolutely cannot go, which is what you should be doing, the, the next time you get an urge to go, water. Water helps a lot because, remember, at the least if that poop stays a little bit soft, uh, you know, you'll be able to stay in the right spot. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, uh, the more you can avoid the problem, the better off you'll be. Okay. Right? Thank right. you very much. And thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> all right. Let's get to our next embarrassing question. That's Laura. Hey, Laura, how are you? Good, how are you doing? So what, what's your embarrassing question? Do you, do you have... I have bloody noses. So it's not ghost poop anymore? No, 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 okay. don't want the poop. <laughs> so you have bloody noses. Um, when I get nervous or um, anxious, my nose just starts bleeding. So what kinds of things stress you out so much that you get nosebleeds? Well, I'm a very busy mom and mm -hmm. grandmom, so, yeah, and my work is very, very, you know, time-consuming and very busy and stressful. So the ordinary stresses of life? Yeah. Okay. Let me show you why I think it's happening. Okay. This might be very helpful to you and a lot of others. So I built you a little model here, the nose. Right? So when you get nervous, a couple of things start happening. The first is your hormones start to change, those stress hormones. So go ahead and fill up the yellow hormones into the stress hormone bucket here. As those hormones begin to build, it keeps going and going and going. Your heart begins to race and your blood pressure begins to mm -hmm. respond. When the stress hormones reach a critical mass, sound like you? Are you yeah. doing that? <laughs> Those blood vessels normally in the body can handle that high blood pressure, but not in your nose where they're very fragile. And too much of a blood pressure spike really drive that blood pressure up. You're getting mad about something that really wasn't all that important. And all of a sudden, when you have that blood pressure at a critical location, you get that spike. <laughs> and this happens. Yeah. The nervous nosebleed. Yeah. Nervous nosebleed. Again. I'm highlighting this because although the nose arteries, the blood vessels are fragile and they'll bleed first, the other blood vessels could bleed also, including the ones in your head. That's a stroke. Oh. Yeah. So this is a warning sign to you that you're having some of these blood pressure spikes we're talking about. So how do you deal with that, everybody? Focus on coping with the stress, not getting rid of it. And there's some things that drive your blood pressure up that you should probably avoid. For example, caffeine. Fair okay. enough? Okay. Yeah, I put that. ice packs on the back of oh, my neck. Ice packs too. are smart. Okay. Ice packs are smart. Okay. All Thank right. you. Next up is Brenda with a very awkward question that she's asked us on Facebook. How are you, Brenda? Hi, Thanks Dr. for joining Oz. the show. Thank you. Stage is yours. What's your question? Well, Dr. Oz, I suffer from the most embarrassing problem in the world. And I want to ask this question for all the women out there because I know we all suffer from it. Mm. Camel toe. Is this a health problem? Should I be concerned? <laughs> Camel toe. All right. So you brought some photos, right? That I'm allowed to look at? Sure. All right. So here's, some, here's one photo that I'm told will prove it. All right. So that's what you call a camel toe. Yes. Uh, can I actually show you what camel toes look like? Of course. Okay, so here's a picture of what a real camel toe looks like. All right. <laughs> let's, and let's put those side to side. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you if we can use a more technical term. Sure. Let's call it a reverse wedgie. <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> that's fine. So, Reverse wedgie. Now, the reason for most reverse wedgies are that the pants are a bit tight. Yes. So I'm going to explain to you the answer to your question, whether this is really a concern or not. All right? So come, okay. on, come on over here. So I recreated a little model. You can stand on over here. Okay? And so you've got these two little mounts here, the labia. And the labia are actually moisture than other parts of the body. They're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And there's usually a small amount of yeast in between there. So, Brenda, when you're wearing underwear, and if it's a little tighter than it's supposed to be, and it's being pushed in by pants that are a bit tighter than they're supposed to be, go ahead and mimic that for me. It pulls in like that. Is that right? Yes. So go ahead and do this. So you're wearing it, and you're moving around this, wiggling its way in there. And is that sort of the view you get after a while? Yeah. All right. Now, as you do that, you're actually cutting off a little bit of the air supply, that part of the body, so it gets hot. 
In addition, you get sweat buildup because it's already a bit moist in there. And you mix all that together and you will get yeast in here in a big time way. And as time goes on, you get more and more yeast. And that can actually lead to yeast infections, which has actually been shown to occur because of the reverse wedging. Makes I sense? remember that term, reverse, reverse wedging. Now, <laughs> let me show you a little trick that you and everybody out there, because you asked this question for everybody, and I appreciate that very much. A great way that you can figure out if you're prone to having a reverse wedging. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're looking for tests to check uh, if your pants are too tight. This is called the reverse wedgie test. It's very simple. You lean forward, and you try to touch your toes. You don't have to actually touch them, but as you get closer, you feel that it's tight in there? Not today. Not today, okay. <laughs> All right, well, that's good. And those pants fit great on you, but if it's too tight for you, mm -hmm. your workout clothes, for example, that means that, that you're prone to the reverse wedging. Okay. Okay. Thank you very, very much for sharing your story. <laughs> Thank right. you. Up next, you have two of them, but she has nine, and they're all above your waist. You're not going to believe what she's here to ask me about. That's next. Coming up, she's going to reveal something pretty shocking about her body. More popped up through pregnancy. You too could be like her. You examine your body right now. And later, I was told by my producers something potentially embarrassing is going to happen. The staff comes clean with Dr. Oz's darkest health secret. <laughs> So let's start talking. Now the web to have an international conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today, I'm so lucky. Yeah. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. So you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. Before the break, I told you this woman was going to be revealing something pretty shocking about her body. So, Leah, thanks for joining us. So, what's the story? Well, this is kind of embarrassing to ask, but while most women have two nipples, I actually have nine of them. No one else in my family has this problem, so why do I? Nine nipples. Yes. And how old were you when you noticed them? They kind of started appearing around puberty, and then they more popped up through pregnancy. And have you ever had pain from them? Did they embarrass you? At first, they were a little bit embarrassing. Um, but as time went on, I realized who else gets to say they have nine nipples? So I kind of just <laughs> own it now. <laughs> and they don't cause me any pain at all. <laughs> well, can, if I can go back to the very beginning so we're all on the same page. Uh, where exactly are they located? Would you mind us looking at them? For sure. Right. There's two on the bottom down here. Mm -hmm. And then I have one up here. Okay. Okay, there's one here okay one right there and then i have one in each armpit you have it in the armpits yeah right. and they, they don't cause you pain not at all right. so there's one other thing you were going to reveal about your nipples what's that well one of them actually lactates it lactates yes which one is the one that lactates it's this one right here actually can i see it if it lactates we can try yeah okay, we'll I, try. i'm not nursing at the moment but it mm -hmm. sometimes works See if it works. Oh, I do see a little milk coming out. Yeah, that may be Just hard to see. Just a little bit, a yeah. little bit of clear fluid. You see the fluid coming out? So, I think you made a little video. Put that video if you, if you can. Let's take a look at that. This is when you were, you were nursing your baby? Yeah. Yeah. It's a fair amount of milk that comes out of that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, let me show you what's happening, if you don't mind. By, by the way, uh, Leah's not a typical. 6% of us, 6% of us have at least one extra nipple. And there's an important reason for it. You asked if it's genetic or not. Uh, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. And I'm going to show everybody where these nipples are so you can examine your body you know, right now. If everybody home can do it, here in the audience, just wait till you're out of the studio. And then we'll go look. So come on back here. I'm going to show everybody. So let me go over with Leah. You can come over here, Leah. Let me show everybody where Leah pointed out where she has her extra nipples. So let's put them on this body. And again, we should point that out a few that were lower down. Uh, and then there's a couple that she has that are above her breast that go up in towards the axilla area. And this is the one that you milked that had a little bit of yeah. uh, material in it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, there are some lines that can connect all of these together. Let's put those lines up there. And these lines that connect these, these little nipples are called milk lines. And they're present in all mammals. All mammals, including us, have milk lines. And this is where breast tissue could arise. They look at all the way up from the axilla all the way down to the groin area. 
And, and you know, along that pathway, there are all kinds of small little nipples that can ar arise. Some of them get large, some don't. And they can appear in those locations, so you can look for them if you're one of the 6% of all people who have these. So let me explain to you why your nipple that's giving milk is able to give milk. So if you go back to the animation, as, uh, at, at birth, we, you know, we have the potential to have this. We have tissue in our breasts, and we have other potential areas like this one, for example. This could become a nipple. Now, as you, age, you become older and develop puberty, the ovaries will start making all kinds of hormones. That's surgeon hormones, right? What causes this incredible change, triggers a huge bunch of alterations throughout the body, including allowing breast tissue and extra nipples, if they're present, to grow. And those nipples, here's the breast up here, and the nipple down below will begin to cause a little bit of bulge later on as they pop out, which happens during puberty. Breastfeeding will do it too. When you yeah. get pregnant, you actually are stimulating those same hormones, you'll be able to see these much more readily. And they take on the appearance of a mole. So, come on back, we'll sit down a second. Uh, many women will notice this, and a lot of people get freaked out when they see it, but the, the good news is, you generally don't have to worry about it, it's not harmful for your health, but the one little cautionary note is that if it's got breast tissue in it, then you've got to take a little extra caution, because if it's got okay. breast tissue in it, it could develop some of the problems that breasts sometimes have, including potentially breast cancer. Okay. So just. Feel it, examine it, be aware of it, show it to your doctor, have the conversation about it. Okay. All right. I hope it helps your health. Thank you very much. Thanks for being brave enough to share the story. Thank you. All right. Up next, I scoured the internet to uncover some of the most embarrassing health videos that will leave you asking, you did what? Up next, your funniest health videos. You did what? Why did you agree to get your back waxed? The pain-free waxing survival kit. And one hairy man to another. Yeah. There are a couple little tricks that help a lot. And later, embarrassing photos that led to a total health transformation. It helped to spark over 100 pound weight loss. 100 pounds! So let's start talking. Now the web to have a national conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today, I'm so lucky. Yeah. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. I always say laughter is the best medicine. And these days, the best place to find laughter and funny is online. So I scoured YouTube, searching for some of the funniest health videos caught on tape. The ones that leave you asking, you did what? <laughs> when it came to embarrassing home videos, you did not disappoint. <laughs> some of you just couldn't seem to get in your 10,000 steps. <laughs> Some of you just couldn't handle the healthy food that I recommend. And this one kid has definitely seen my demo on burping. And women aren't the only ones concerned about hygiene. Oh. <laughs> Ready? Ah! That last video was definitely my favorite. And Jim and his wife Dawn and the three kids are all here to talk about it. So Jim, why did you agree to get your back waxed? Well, unfortunately, uh, the thinner my hair grows, uh, the thicker my back gets. And uh, <laughs> like a woolly mammoth back there, it's uh, been shaved for the several years in the past. And I agreed with the wife that uh, we do it as a family project. And very painful. <laughs> it looks painful. So, Very so, painful. Dawn, you look like you're doing all the heavy lifting. Most of the waxing is coming with your hands. How did I, you take it? I took the job, and I, I really went with it because yeah. I enjoyed it. You enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> Although he was screaming like a, a little girl. Uh, <laughs> it, it was fun. It was a yeah. lot of fun. But I don't think I was doing it right. I yeah. don't. It, it shouldn't be that painful, right? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I happen to have the same problem. Okay. So I, I think it can be quite painful. But let me get yeah. the kids, because they'll tell us very authentically. So sure. Megan and Ella, what do you guys think? How bad is it for your father, really? How, first of all, how bad is his back hair for you guys? Uh, it's pretty bad. Is that right? <laughs> pretty hairy. Pretty hairy? Yes. So let me share some advice with you. you sure. One day is going to be your problem, too, little one. 
Uh, <laughs> as one hairy man to another, yeah. there are a couple little tricks that help a lot. And this okay. is, I think, these are my tips for getting a smart, pain-free, at least relatively speaking, uh, yeah. back waxing. First, you take 400 milligrams of ibuprofen. Okay. And then I love Arnica. And Arnica comes in a gel form. So once they've finished torturing you with the wax, <laughs> take yeah. a little bit of Arnica gel. Okay. Put it on your back, and you'll be much sure. happier. Right. Definitely. This could be part of your survival kit here. Okay. Here's some ibuprofen also. Oh, oh no. wow. <laughs> Good luck with that. I'm pretty happy. Thanks. Thank you so much. You're so cute. I love you. <laughs> All right. Up next, a segment is so surprising that even I don't know what's going to happen. All I've been told is it's something very embarrassing about me. So stay tuned. We'll find out. <laughs> Let's start talking. Now the web to have a national conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today, I'm so lucky. Yeah. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. You don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. For the first time in the history of this show, I have no idea what's going on. Now, I was told by my producers something potentially embarrassing is going to happen. And the last thing I have in my script is roll tape. So let's roll tape. So we've all worked with Dr. Oz for more than three years now. There's nobody more professional or committed to his work. There's no one more considerate. There is nobody with more impeccable manners. There's just one thing. And we kind of have to let the cat out of the bag here, and that is, there's a smell. It's pretty powerful. Dr. Oz has the worst smelling gas. Unfortunately, I learned it the hard way. The first time it happened, it kind of caught me by surprise. Whoa! I know that there were two producers in a room with him when it happened. Pretty smelly, silent, but deadly. I mean, and they looked at each other and one went, what just happened? It definitely smelled a little bit like beans, probably something he had had for lunch. Lentils, quinoa. It's like you took a swamp and turned it over. You know, he's talked about it on the show. You're not supposed to hold it in. He definitely practices what he preaches. I think he thinks it's okay because it's part of nature and it's a bodily function. There may be some truth to that, but we don't do that. I would never say anything to Dr. Oz. I mean, how do you bring it up? No one can even think of talking to him about this. I guess it's just our little Oz family secret. <laughs> All right, touche. I do think it's part of nature. Now, now I'm being told, and I'll fix their wagons later when I get back backstage, I'm being told to call out my surprise guest, who I'm told I trust immensely. So let's see who this is. Come on out. You probably started this whole thing. <laughs> Who else? Who else would they call? It was probably your idea. Yeah, Absolutely like, not. In fact, your producers begged me, Mavit. They, you know, they love you, they adore you, but they're afraid to tell you about this problem, okay? <laughs> so who would they call but your buddy? I'm not only your buddy, but I'm your internist and I'm your gastroenterologist. You are both of those things. So you've seen the testimony, I've got to ask you. How do you plead? Guilty, oh, for sure. Okay. Oh, there's no question. <laughs> You're pleading guilty. How about guilty with an explanation? Okay? All right. So, first of all, why do we have gas, okay? Most of it is from the action of the bacteria, the trillions of bacteria in your colon mm -hmm. on the undigested food. So what happens is you eat food, it goes down, a lot of it is digested, but some of it is not, and that goes down to your intestinal tract and into your colon, and what's waiting there? Trillions of bacteria, and to them, that's food. And what's the waste product? Gas. So let's do a demo, okay? Because, okay. you know, we can talk till our faces are blue <laughs> <laughs> or something else about, um, about all of these, uh, of the, all the theory. But let's talk about you in specific. Now, you've pleaded guilty already, okay? But let's find <laughs> out if you really are guilty, at least, of having more farts than normal. Now, I use the word farts, okay? And everybody <laughs> laughs, right? Show. Okay, I use that in my practice. I like to say that word because people are embarrassed to talk about farts, mm -hmm. okay? I don't want to say it too I'm not, much. I like, I like it. You, you, well, nothing yeah. embarrasses you, right? <laughs> Even this, okay? So let me ask you, can you estimate how many times you pass gas in a day? 
15 to 20. 15 to 20. If that's true, then you're actually within normal. Now, I'm surprised by that answer, but I love that answer because it feeds right into what we're going to be talking about, okay? People don't care if you fart all day long as long as it doesn't bother them, okay? What gives it odor are foods that cause sulfur-containing gas, okay? Especially hydrogen sulfide, okay? And those, those are cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower, cabbage, broccoli, also beer, eggs, and meat. How many of those do you eat? Oh, a lot of cruciferous vegetables. I mean, yeah. this is a staple for me. Now, what happens when you take, we've got some cauliflower here, we've got some meat, and we've got some eggs. And just go ahead, and you put them in your intestines. Just put them in as many as you want. All right. There we are. Pour this in here. I'm pour that in there. You and, you and me in the kitchen. This yes, is, this it's is come a dangerous to this, thing. I usually, I usually cook the meat, but let's put this in like that. <laughs> Yeah, raw, do not have raw should, meat. Should I crack the eggs? Okay, so, no, don't just throw them in there. And now I'm going to be grinding them all up, okay? I'm in digesting that food, and this is, do, do, do not, no. high slapstick potential. Oh, man, Mehmet. Yes! And he's fouled on the play. All right, I've grinded it all up, okay? Now, it's going through your intestinal tract, all those bacteria are acting on it, and now just... Unscrew this and just take a little whiff. Take, take my jacket off? No, 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 it's not going to explode or anything like that. Yeah, hold it this way. <laughs> and what do you smell? Ooh, oh. <laughs> sulfur. It's, sulfur. It's, yeah. Rotten eggs. Rotten okay. eggs is what it smells so, like. <clears throat> that's Whoa. what you have. Now that is... Uh, that's room clearing. Okay, that uh. is the deadly part. Yes. All right, that is the deadly part. And you know what the, what the stuff is that causes it. And maybe you want to give it up, and maybe you don't want to give it up. Now we're going to talk about, we say silent but deadly, but we're going to do deadly and then the, the, the noise, a part of it. So what makes a fart have a noise, right? <laughs> it's like, I can't believe I'm talking about this, right? <laughs> my mother, it's my mother's birthday today. She, may, oh, she rest in, may she rest in peace, right? She, she'd be so proud of me right now talking she about be, with two whippy cushions in front of me. I'm so proud. But anyway, so what makes it is the physics. Okay, it's a combination, as any 13-year-old boy can tell you, yeah. it's a combination of the volume, mm -hmm. how much you're pressing down, and the local geometry at the anus, okay? Yeah. So let's talk about this. This is the, uh, the silent, what you have, okay? okay? And this is to be smaller volume and relaxed, and not, a, not a lot of volume, and you're not pushing down. So push down slowly, and this is the sound that you're gonna hear. Oh, very quiet. That sound of silence is uh, <laughs> followed by people running out of the room, right? Okay. Now this, give it a real, you know, this is the more, this is more large volume and uh, a lot of force. Okay. I don't do that. This, this is All me. Right. All right, I am going to share with you a family secret. Now, if you are in that room, and you know you're about to fart, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay? You go into the other room, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, but when you go into that other room, you pass the gas, you do not immediately come back in because you will bring the fart with you. <laughs> we, right? right? Am I, I right this. or I've am I this. wrong? Okay? Yeah. Am I right or am I wrong? Okay. So this, we went to medical school. What you have to do, I'm going to teach you how to uncouple a fart. Okay? You have to uncouple the fart from your clothing. Okay? All right, so you walk over here. Right. Okay, this is now another room, okay? Right. And you, you will just pretend yeah. you'll... No, no, not you. Yeah. You're like very solid. Okay, now you have to wiggle it around. You have to get it, get it out, get it out of the clothing, all right? Now you're tempted to come right back in. Do not do that. It's still in there. Now you have to move a little bit away from you. Do it again in another room. Okay, now come back in. The cleansing process. And now you are willing to return to society. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Memenov. Dr. LaPook, thank you very much. <laughs> Dr. LaPook, all right. I'll be talking to my staff about this for some time. You'll hear from them, I suspect, later on. Sometimes your cringeworthy moments happen when you're watching this show at home. Up next, embarrassing moments you've had watching with your kids. Up next, what her five-year-old heard on this show created a very embarrassing moment. His ears are like antennas, and he yeah. sucks it all in, <laughs> and it never leaves. How she handled it, a lesson for every parent. Good job, Mom. Thank you. That's straight ahead. <laughs> I'm excited to be on Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz's show. So let's start talking. Now the web to have an international conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today. I'm so lucky. 
and make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. Now, we cover a lot of embarrassing topics on this show because, let's face it, that goes with the territory. But sometimes that can lead to some pretty embarrassing moments at home if your kids are watching with you. And that happened to Rebecca. She's here with her son, Aaron, who's waiting patiently backstage and can't hear. There he is, Aaron. <laughs> so, Becca, Rebecca, you usually watch the show with Aaron? I don't watch it with him, but oftentimes he comes in the room and he's like, Mom, I need this, I need that. So I have to help him. So he's up catching clips of the show. And, you know, kids' ears are like antennas, and yeah. he sucks it all in, <laughs> and it never leaves. <laughs> so what's your most embarrassing moment today, you think, with, with Aaron watching the show? You did a clip with a guy coming down a pink slide that was a vagina. <laughs> You mean this segment? Let's roll the clip, folks. Today we're gonna find out their real ages. Not just of their bodies, but of their vagina and their penis. Tom, yes. you get to be the penis. <laughs> Remember, the vaginal wall is here and it's pretty lubricated in your 20s. So I'm gonna lubricate it. Up. There! Is <laughs> 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 that the orgasm? All right. All right. What? could possibly be embarrassing about that. So straightforward. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> I had to explain to a child what a vagina was. <laughs> What'd you tell him? Uh, nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. I ignored him for an entire week. <laughs> you did? <laughs> how, how old is Aaron? He's only five. Five years old. And when did you start talking to him, or have you started talking to him about, about body parts yet? Well, we do, you know, when you're potty training, you go over the guys' parts, but you don't really talk about the women. Yeah. So you leave it at that with the guys' parts. <laughs> All right, so you see the segment, Aaron appropriately asks you about the women. You don't talk to him about it for a week, or you try to pretend it's going away, and what happened? He didn't, he was relentless, so I went <laughs> online and found a cartoon version of a vagina, which was very hard to do, by the way. <laughs> It wasn't even in English, but I showed him this picture, and he got a vagina, and I got silence. <laughs> he does? Yes. So he knows what a vagina is now? He does know what a vagina He keeps calling it an Adama, though. He couldn't even say it at first. He kept saying, what's an Adama? What's an Adama? But finally, after we had our little conversation, he could say what a vagina is. I like Adama. Adama could work for the show from now on. <laughs> I use it now. <laughs> yeah, Adama. That's good. So let me ask you, it, 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 on, the, on the bright side of this, and I know it can be awkward sometimes, uh, but I also feel an obligation to talk about some of this stuff uh, as much as we can to get people educated yeah. about it. You, did it catalyze a conversation about the birds and the bees? Absolutely. It opened up full communication. I was able to discuss how women and men are different, and he was clearly understanding now, and he's got the verbal down pack too. Absolutely. So uh, communication, you really can't go wrong. So oh. I just wasn't ready for it at <laughs> five. Well, I'm happy that after you got over the initial shock with Aaron, you went on and had this conversation openly. Because the reality is, when parents don't talk to their kids about the body, it sends a bad message. And if you're embarrassed, they're going to be embarrassed. Yeah. But if you take pride in your body, they'll be proud of it. I think a lot of folks are ashamed of themselves because they always felt the embarrassment in their parents when they were having the first conversation. So, good job, Mom. Thank you. All right. Now, can we bring Aaron out? I think I'll, so. I'll behave myself. <laughs> okay. All right. Come on out, Aaron. Sit over here, why not? You know, you sit over here, Aaron. Now come on over here. Now I'm gonna sit next to you. I'm gonna sit over next to you. Can I sit next to you, Aaron? Sure. There we are. Are you comfortable like that? Yes. <laughs> so your mom tells me that you watch a show once in a while. Yes, cartoons. Yeah. Do, you ever, do you ever watch my show on purpose? <laughs> <She's on. laughs> do you sometimes watch TV with your mom when she's watching? Yes. And do you enjoy it then? Yes. <laughs> Do you pester her at all? No. No. <laughs> you said, I'm so happy you're talking to your mom about all kinds of things and she's able to teach you about those things. So one, one last question. Do you, are you enjoying school? Yes. Would you, would you rather watch TV or go to school? At night I watch TV in the morning I go to school. So you do both. It's a yes. good compromise. <laughs> all right. 
You're cute. Listen, I think it's wonderful when, when kids are asking questions about body parts that they actually hear the answers from their parents using the right terms. I agree. And I think a lot of us, you know, make up terms because we're sort of embarrassed about it. Just say the words the way they're supposed to be said. There's no embarrassment. It's just facts. Get the words out the right way and kids will feel proud that they know something that maybe everyone else doesn't. Yes. That's stated. I'm going to be more careful about some of the words that I choose. A little more careful about the clips that we put on the show to make it more comfortable for everybody. And Aaron, because you're so curious, I've got a thought for you, if you want. I've gotten you an age-appropriate book about the human body. And if you want to take this and study it, maybe I'll meet you in med school one I day. I can see a skeleton head on the box. Yeah, there's a skeleton head on there. You, you like skeletons? Mm-mm. No? <laughs> right. Sometimes they're, like, dead. <laughs> it's true. But you know what? I think one day, maybe even today, you'll be getting an A in biology. Fair enough? Mm-hmm. Enjoy that. <laughs> take care of your mom for me. Up next, I'm revealing how your most embarrassing photos might actually be good for your health. You don't want to miss it. Let's start talking. Now the web to have an international conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today, I'm so lucky. Yeah. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. You don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. Website Awkward Family Photos. You gotta check it out. It's an entire website just devoted to awkward family photos like this one. <laughs> now, what if that made the Christmas picture? <laughs> and how about this one? <laughs> these, are, these are all real. <laughs> There's some more. I can put, put another one up. This is this one I absolutely adore. <laughs> I mean, who got that? And there's one more, I think. There it is. <laughs> you like that? That's me. That is me. Absolutely. No, I did not actually put that on the website. Uh, that, that was uh, what, a picture of me graduating from medical school. No, that's, that's Halloween picture I took. I don't dress like that. But the great thing is sometimes our most embarrassing photos can help spark a health transformation. So today I asked my viewers to bring in their embarrassing photos that transformed their health. Now Michelle's here. Tell me about your photo. Well, Dr. Oz, I was uh, very addicted to tanning beds. And um, I felt that I was giving myself a, a glow, mm. healthy glow, until I uh, saw this photo. Can I see it? Yes, you can. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Did y'all see that? Was that the worst burn you'd ever gotten? Well, um, actually, it, I didn't stop after that, doctor. I still had the craving to go. I went one more time after that. Did you think you were burned when you had this picture no, taken? No, I felt, no, I did not. And I, I didn't think I was burned walking around at this gala. And then when I saw the photo, I realized I was cooking my skin. Yeah. At least you have eye protection. I had eye protection, but I, <laughs> yeah, I was worried about my eyes, but actually it actually made me look worse. And I just didn't realize that until I saw the photo. So that one photo changed your mind? Um, it actually helped me, um, but I still had the drive to go, mm. the sensation to go. And then back in January, I saw one of your shows and you were talking about tanning beds. And um, that sealed the deal for me. And you can say I'm probably the palest Italian you ever met in your life. <laughs> right. So you haven't tanned since then? No. Yeah. No, I have not. Well, you look just fine the way you are. Thank you very That's much. That's a great story. You ought to be proud of making the change. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. All right. Next up is Trisha. How are you, Trisha? So what's the story of your photo? Well, Dr. Oz, every bride has their moment when they're getting married. They're at their bridal shower, opening gifts with fancy lingerie. And I opened my gift, and it's big granny panties because mm. I was so heavy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. you, know, I, you know, I was embarrassed uh, just being around family and friends and, and, and just opening this gift with, with big old panties. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, after, after seeing this photo, I, I had to make a change, and it helped to spark uh, over 100-pound weight loss. 100 pounds! <laughs> Stand up, let me see. Isn't that great? So how'd you do it? How'd you lose the weight? You know, I got off 
my butt. I joined some <laughs> Body by Denise uh, uh, boot camp class, and, and, and I started eating healthier and... She loves and, and just do healthy eating and exercise. I, I lost the weight. <laughs> so where do you keep this precious photo now? It's locked away. <laughs> <laughs> but no one can ever see it again. No, and you know, I, I do keep the photo for inspiration, but it's in a box, within a box, in a closet, <laughs> tucked away. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, this is a wonderful story. Thank Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> Coming up, sometimes laughter really is the best medicine. You have unlocked lip hair? I got a tea for that. How about ladies that have cankles? Got a tea for that. And the best Dr. Oz impression goes to... Find out next. I'm excited to be on Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz's show. So let's start talking. Now the web to have an international conversation about health and wellness. This is a no embarrassment zone. There's no topic that's off limits. I came to work today. I'm so lucky. Yeah. And make sure you're sharing this information with the people you love. You're good to go. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. You don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new. Now, back to the show. Today's show was all about making you laugh. And sometimes you even need to laugh at yourself. Now, I learned that this year when Saturday Night Live decided to poke a little fun at me. And they weren't the only ones. From newscasters to my own viewers, lots of you seem to have an Oz impression. Correct something I said in the last segment about home remedies. I meant to say vinegar and water douche, not vinegar and oil. <laughs> that would be bad, ladies. This is the most important show we've ever done here. It's going to be an unforgettable hour of television. Now, I know I said that about yesterday's show on pet dander, the danger from, and the importance of getting a good night's sleep. But today, I really mean it. Hi, I'm Dr. Oz, and this is the perfect S-shaped poop. Coming up, I'm Dr. Oz. Hi, welcome back to the Dr. Oz Show. Hi, I'm Dr. Oz, and I have the number one secret to boost your metabolism for ultimate energy. Corn chips. It's time to examine your liver. You have unwanted lip hair? I got a tea for that. How about ladies that have cankles? Got a tea for that. And especially diarrhea. We have a tea for that. And the best Dr. Oz impression goes to... Daryl from New Jersey. Come on out, Daryl. Oh, you, you dressed the part. Uh, you put my gloves perfect. on. So how long have you been doing Dr. Oz impressions? I don't know, about a couple of years during the commercials. I like to try and <laughs> impersonate you just a little bit. Do people think you're pretty good at it? Ooh, I don't know. What do you think? We'll find out. You know, we're going to have all of you judge. Fair enough? We're going to do this together. Step up here now. You can okay. read off that prompter, okay. all right? You ready to help me deliver, deliver the final tip? Absolutely. It's the most important tip we're going to deliver today. Okay. You get ready for it? Got it. Okay. Take it away, Daryl. Did you know that laughter can actually be a good exercise for you? That's right. A good belly laugh exercises the diaphragm. It compresses your abdominal muscles and it works your shoulders. And laughing 100 times a day is equivalent to 15 minutes on an exercise bike. That is so good. <laughs> it's so perfect. So surround yourself with 20 people like Daryl, and you'll not only be happier, you'll be healthier, too. For more on today's show, go to DrOz.com, and I'll see you next time. That was great. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's next.